and welcome to my Xbox and me episode 302. I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside the one and only Matt P Video. Matt is back. Hello. Oh, I am back. Ooh. I am not dead. I'm I here. mean, I how's mean. the Jim Ryan body pillow? <laughs> uh, uh, delightful, you know, <laughs> delightful. <laughs> So where was you? You went? Was you on holiday? What, what the hell happened? I, last because, week. Well, okay, let me week. give let me give context, right? Because you were gone, and then we started getting pictures of you posting Game Boy games, like you was at your mum's cleaning it out or something. Is that what I, happened? I, yeah, basically, yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's so. a little peek behind the curtain. It's my birthday today, as we're it recording. Is. Happy um, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to, you. to you. Happy birthday, birthday dear Matt P. Happy, happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. I didn't expect the entire song, but I appreciate it very much. I was. Um, we could do the whole song if you want. I don't, I, know the the I don't know the rest of the verses, Chris. The That's it. Basically, yeah, you just go a little bit longer, and then you start counting. How old are you Sorry. today? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Carry on. Yes. Yeah, so uh, last weekend, I went to go visit my parents to uh, to celebrate my birthday with them a little bit early. Ah. And uh, yeah, classic mum mode was like, get in the attic and swipe all your old crap. So I went up there and found a load of... Yeah, well, Game Boy Advance games, and was like, oh. "Oh, clearly, I only played Disney Game Boy Advance games in my in my childhood." Yes, interesting. Yes, uh, and the one and only, of course, Two Fresh Crash. Crash, how are you? I'm doing good. How how is how are you guys doing? You know, Crash. It's a state yeah. of emergency where I'm at right now, mate. State of I know. fucking emergency. I know, for you, yeah. State of emergency, my Xbox and my audience. Now, if you want a real peek behind the curtain, let me do it for you. Today, I went and got my hair cut literally 10 minutes before recording. I've literally come back and just had my hair cut. So I didn't look at... When I go to the barber, I don't look at myself in the mirror because I don't have my glasses on. I've got to take my glasses off. I've got home, mm. sat down with the lads today to do the podcast, I've looked at myself on the, the monitor and look what has happened. Nah, white people, I'm sure you will not understand this. <laughs> but. <clears throat> also, audio listeners, I'm sure you won't understand this, but. The barber's fucked up my hair. I can't believe it. Like, it's, really bad. It's not the most symmetrical thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm... I've never had a barber mess up my hairline before, ever. So, it's. I'm in shock. I'm on the honestly, <laughs> honestly, like honestly, honestly. I'm in shock. Like I know we're an Xbox podcast, and we'll get to that. But this is my haircut and me from now on because she's <laughs> the wheeze. I was going to say you, you lot are taking the mick out of me for talking about PlayStation, and here we are. That's different. Talking yeah? about this your is, This is the, You're this is about the, the and me section. Yeah? No, not even compare. That's Forget fair. that. This is That's the fair. and me That's section fair. of the podcast, yeah? That's it's fair. like my That's PlayStation fair. and me. I've got a separate channel for that, all right? That's God fair. damn it. That's fair. God damn it. But yeah, how are I'm glad everyone's well. Uh, if you don't know, my Xbox and me is a weekly Xbox podcast where we talk about all things Xbox related. If you want the show early, head over to patreon.com slash mcfixer. Keep the lights on, help the show grow. And if you are if you're somebody who is lucky enough to uh, be able to afford uh, to pay for your entertainment, please do consider supporting over on Patreon. It does really, really help. Uh, make sure you find us on all podcast services, Spotify, iTunes. Google Play, Amazon, all of that jazz. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Again, it worked last week. We saw a bump, so I'm going to say it again this week, which is even if you are someone who doesn't listen to us on YouTube or someone who doesn't watch our little opinion piece videos or our gameplay videos, please do go over and hit the subscribe button if you have an account. It helps us way more than you would imagine. So please, 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 please do. Patreon producers this month are the one and only Aaron Guard. Big shout out to Aaron Guard for supporting and FNH Paul. Remember, you can become a Patreon producer, uh, patreon.com slash mcfixer and have your name read out on the show. Topic of the show this week. Nah, we got a lot of things here. There's a lot to talk about considering we did the show on Friday, Chris. There's still a lot to talk about, which is good. Yeah. I think we're going to go with... I don't know how we're going to play this, but I think we'll go with the conversation of easy. Easy okay. mode in video games. Because I feel like this is the big topic right now that is going on in the world. Everybody's upset. Everybody's annoyed. Everybody is stressed 
about this news. So I guess this little Smitty asked the question. He says, what are your opinions on playing games on the easiest difficulty? That was easiest. I know I mumbled it there. I try to play on normal, but often not the difficulty down to easy, especially if uh, there are no achievement-based difficulty. Um, side note, Psychonauts having an invincibility mode is an amazing option and more games should do it. So, my question to the crew is, should easy mode exist? Is it a spit in the face to gamers? How dare they make an easy mode? Honestly, guys, how do you guys feel about, about... How do you feel about easy mode before we get into invincibility mode and things like that? Easy mode, how do you feel about it, Crash? I think it should exist. I really think it's up to the developer, obviously, because I do think games are a form of art so that if a developer feels like an easy mode goes against what they're trying to create, cool, don't add it. But I don't think it takes away from a game. I don't think, like, if they were to add easy mode in Dark Souls, I know this gets added all the time, the only thing that would happen is it would hurt people's egos who get to say, like, I beat Dark Souls and feel very special about themselves. Yep. Like, I don't really think there's a downside to adding an easy mode. It makes the game more accessible to more people, more people can play it and beat it, and that's always a good thing. Matt? 100% agree. I, I would even go a step further, potentially, and sort of say easy mode, normal mode, hard mode. I think all that's a bit... I mean, old-fashioned. I mean, certainly games still do it now. I think the better way to tackle that is something like The Last of Us Part Two did and, and Ratchet and Clank I know did as well, which is add a whole bunch of accessibility features. And it sounds like Psychonauts is doing it as well, right, with invincibility mode. Um, I think that would actually really help. Like you mentioned uh, from software games, and that's kind of where this debate always lies, right? And you're right. It is 100% an ego thing to say, I beat that game. Um, and, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. If they had an invincibility toggle in bloodborne so or you know from software what's the next one elden ring there you go thank you um if they had an invincibility mode in, in elden ring and you needed it to just get past one boss or you wanted it on for the entire game just so you could experience the george rr R. martin story of that game um you should absolutely be allowed to do that like like yeah it's and that specifically invincibility mode in those sorts of games seems like again we're not game developers i don't know how difficult these things are to implement but surely that's relatively easy to implement an invincibility mode toggle and if more people can play a game because of it then what is the downside i don't get it yeah i'm so i've got yeah i'm i agree with you both for the most part i think it's a, a very a multi layered question unfortunately because i do think there is there is okay let me let me break it down like this right which is I don't agree with participation trophies. I think participation trophies in our society is something that is a bad thing because I think it rewards people for being losers. P blank, point blank, that's how I was brought up. If you're not winning, you're a loser. That doesn't make you a bad person. That doesn't mean you are meaningless. That doesn't mean anything of the sort. It means you're lost. And what does it mean if you lose? It means you should practice and practice and practice to get better. Okay, so now attach that to gaming, which I don't disagree with anything you both said. I agree with most of it. But I do think there is something to be said of, of people wanting to have a game out there, such as Dark Souls, Bloodborne, um, Demon Souls, all of these type of games, for there to be a game out there that's just not for everybody. I don't think there's sure. anything wrong with that. And I don't think if you're a game designer and you've built a game in a very specific way that is this game is going to be hard, it does take away from that game then. If you just add an invincibility um, mode or an easy mode, I do think it takes away from the thing you try to build, right? It's, the, it's similar to, I don't know, art. I, I, know, I know we talk about actual, like a piece of art, right? It can always be interpreted in different ways. If you play, let's use Dark Souls, for instance, because that is actually on Xbox. Yeah. If you play Dark Souls and you play it and you beat four bosses and then you can't get past a certain boss, that is the way you interpret that game, right? That is your, that is your experience with it. That is how you got to appreciate. I had me. I used my, myself, Sekiro, for instance, right? I never beat Sekiro, and it's one of the 
biggest heartaches I have with a game. But also to beat the game, I had to to get to how far I got. I had to literally cheese every single monster. But that mm-hmm. was a part of the experience for me, and I'll never forget that experience. And if you add an easy mode into that, I wouldn't have the experience that I have. Because I just would have ran through it, I would have grabbed one sword that done the most damage, bam, 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 done, it's over. And that's not the experience that the people making the game wanted me to have. So I'm not against games not having this. But what I will say, and I've gone a little bit long and I apologise, there is nothing wrong if people want to add it in their games to have more accessibility. Yeah. That's the part that irks me the most. Is 100%. the people on Twitter? Oh, you shouldn't. This shouldn't be a thing. And, oh, there's no reward. I remember there was someone in my chat the other day. When I say the other day, it was a couple of months ago now. Um, <laughs> who said, "Oh, but what's the point in playing on easy? There's, there's, there's no, there's no level of achievement." I was like, but some people just play games to experience the story, and that's where 100%. you lose me, Matt, in your uh, in your conversation because. As much as Demon Souls and Dark Souls and Bubble and all these games have a story, they're not like story based games in the way of like cutscene here and big moment oh, there yeah. and characters here and words and stuff like that. That's not what these games are. It is the journey also, that you go through. That is the story. Also, also, like death in those games is very thematic on point. Yes. Like you remove that uh that option from the equation of a player dying, you sort of remove part of the world while still the tori- story going over it. But I think you can have your cake and eat it too if you put that decision on the player. It's it's their decision to activate this, right? It's not it's not, it's not toggled right. on from the off. From a game design, yeah. because from a game design, view, it, like literally. So okay, this this use again. I know I can't. I don't want to be Matt P, but I can only think of Dark Souls, or not a uh, Demon Souls for this because I've just played it on PS5, right? Sure. Which is or, or Sekiro. Use Sekiro because that's on Xbox. Uh-huh. You run through. You play the game. You run through. You die. You lose all your souls, and then you go back again. You're literally fundamentally fundamentally changing that video game if it has a, not easy mode, because you can still die on easy mode, but an invincibility mode, you are fundamentally changing what that game is. It's whole loop of run to here, you come up against a little grunt guy that means absolutely nothing. There's still a chance that that dude can kill you, which ruins three hours of bloody progress. Not quite three hours, depending on how you play the game, but you get what I'm trying to say here, right? There's nothing wrong with both. And I, I think it always comes down to a game design choice and whatever the game makers choose to have. I don't think we should berate these companies from Soft or anyone like that because they want to make an ex- extremely hard game that rewards people in a different way to f- starting a game and finishing a game. There's a, that's a different level of reward, right? Like I still felt rewarded in Sekiro, even though I never beat the game. Because I beat six bosses. I got stuck on a boss that I really hated. And it was and it was frustrating. And it was annoying. But you know, if I wanted to get past it, I should have got better. I should have tried. I should have kept sure. trying. I should have kept learning. If I really wanted to. I think there's a couple of things there, right? Like, like you should have just got better. It's difficult because some people can't, right? Like, like some people control schemes, whatever Access- it is. Okay, you're on the back from accessibility. an accessibility point of view. Sure, sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they just can't do it. And if and maybe there's like a specific mechanic a boss has a certain attack that they just can't dodge that for whatever reason, throw on invincibility, get through this boss, and then continue with the game, whatever it is. Like I think, you know, there's this interesting thing. You talk about Sekiro, right? And you've got how, how far do you think you got into the game? Six bosses. Well, I've got to the part where you could have finished the game. There's a there's a specific oh. part where you can end the game early by beating a boss. Sure. And because so what of if you... greedy is, sh- that schmuck wasn't it in my chat to tell me to choose a different option. I could have actually rolled credits on that damn game. But <laughs> instead, I didn't. Instead, I didn't. Sure. Sorry. sure. So th- this is a really hyperbolic example, right? But what if you went to go see a movie in the cinema? Mm-hmm. And before the last act of the movie, they stopped the movie and quizzed you on the first two acts of the movie. And if mm-hmm. you didn't pass the quiz, they chugged you out of the cinema. Is that but the you experience still for- that I'm paying for? That's the, if you put that up yeah. front in your marketing, showing the type of film it is, showing All me right. if you literally put I it, if you are known for this film is a film that you watch three quarters of it, then we're going to quiz you. That's literally, we know what a Demon Souls, Dark Souls, most hard games, you know what you're getting yourself into. 
You know, yeah. it's not hidden. It's not hidden behind behind something where it's like, oh, this is one thing, and then oh, whoa, all of a sudden it becomes another thing. That's not what it is. I also think your analogy is really unfair, Matt, because it'd be the situation you'd want to say is going into a horror movie and the and the movie having jump scares, and you don't want jump scares because you don't like them. Turn them off. So Turn the movie off jump should scares. remove jump scares for you. You can't. That's the experience we're paying for. Because it's it's what the the director and the person who wrote the script and all the people working on it that is what they strive to create, and it's a similar and, thing with video games. And you know what if happens? It's not, when, sorry, Crash, go on. Sorry, I'm sorry. I was just going to say it's not an integral um, part to the games. If it's not, like then you can add an easy mode. But there are games where like the difficulty and the challenge and all those things are important to the experience you have to the art form. Do you know what the difference is? You know people who don't like horror games, do you know what they do? Don't play they them. don't play horror games. Yeah. You know I, if you I don't like that. if you don't like hard games. And I, and again, this is a multi-layered scenario. 100%. Right? Because we're 100%. talking about it from a point of view of from an accessibility point of view, yeah, different argument. The whole story, get, the, this whole conversation that we're having, none in void, start again, different. Different conversation. Yeah. But if we're talking about just easy mode and we're talking about invincibility mode, like it should be down to the creator. Now, do you know? I, yeah. I agree with you. It should be down to the creator and, and because video games are art. So yeah. I think the artist should create the art they want to make whatever form that comes in fair enough i guess my thinking is like if there was an easy mode in elden ring or or, or an invincibility mode in elden ring how would that affect my experience of the game it wouldn't affect my experience of the game i might toggle it on i might not but it's up to me but, and if somebody else wants to toggle it on how does that affect me either it doesn't affect yeah, me at all but art isn't made for you art's made for the artist it's made for the person who's creating it. You don't paint a painting for somebody unless you're paid for in which you're trying to paint their vision, what they want. Art? Wow. Okay. Mm, I don't know if I agree with that. Art is not made for the audience? No. I, I mean... I agree, no. Crash. I'm I, trying to I convey my, my experience and my thoughts through whatever I paint. I'm I not trying it. to tell you... I'm not trying to create what you want to see in a painting. It, no, I, I think, again, I don't think... Again, that's not a... I don't think that's a statement, blanket statement for all art. Yeah, of course. No, no, no. I, yeah. Think, and, and I, think, I should say I'm in, I'm really enjoying this conversation. Like this isn't like <laughs> a, this isn't going, an argument up, by any means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'll put um, the antagonist again. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I think for me, it's a case of look. If I make a piece of music, which I have done, I used to be a musician, and you don't like that piece of music, you're not going to listen to it. Okay, cool, no problem. Yeah. No problem. Sure. Like, you don't like it. It's not for you. You don't, you, you think I'm crap. I can't sing. I can't rap. It's not for you. It's not for you. Mm. And that's the same thing for any game that's really hard. It's not for people who don't want that experience. Now, and that's what we're talking about here, because I do not want anybody to get on me about accessibility and things like that. That's not the conversation that we're having right this precise second. We are talking yep. about invincibility mode and easy mode, and should you be allowed to have them? Me, I play games on normal. I am, I am someone who likes to experience a game from start to finish. I enjoy yep. beating video games. So I play on normal. Because I also don't want the game to be too easy that it feel it doesn't feel like a challenge. Because to me, that isn't fun. That isn't the experience that I want to have. Sure. And thankfully, for most of the games that I play, that experience that that choice is there for me. But I don't then go. I don't then feel like how. Oh, I, I, I'm not a, from an, oh, again. It's so hard because it is from so an accessibility <laughs> point of view though. I understand why you'd add invincibility mode into these hard games. Because it's a case yeah. of, well, I just want to play your game. But again, it comes down to, well, this art wasn't created for you, which is a really horrible thing to say. But you know what's not created for me? Most video games with reading. You know why? I'm dyslexic. But no that's one talks about that. Again, that yeah. No one cares. If you're dyslexic and you struggle to read, there's not an option for you to toggle on read it to me there are there is it's, in some cases very yeah. rarely and we've got push to speak and things like that in certain in certain aspects right but i'm talking about in gears of war when i pick up a note right or my cog tags or whatever and there's this giant wall of text where's the conversation to be had around that then about how how that's not accessible we don't 100%. talk about that do we 
We, we, we very, very briefly touched on it when Resident Evil 8 came out, yeah, right? And yeah. we sort of said, I don't even, I don't know if this is on episode or in your chat maybe, but we said like, hey, if there was like a extra five quid that oh, I could chuck it. in I've and it would so be times. voice acted, mm-hmm. I'd pay it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I think that's a really interesting uh, part of it. But then, then you could get into this weird territory of, are you then charging people who are less able for accessibility features? And yes. is that horrible and weird as well? No. I don't know. Because I need it. So, okay, let me. Yeah. my cousin was disabled. My cousin was disabled. Unfortunately, she passed away when she was 14, right? Sirens on my end. Um, when she was 14. You know what the most expensive shit was? Disability wheelchairs and swimming yeah. pools and fucking medicines. And not medicines in the UK, but I know in the US this is something you guys can relate sure. to. Um, it is the most expensive, heinous things. And is that right? Hell no, it's not right. But that's the life we're in right mm. and to create more accessibility so okay but by, by your logic for what you've just said right if i'm disabled and i can't use my hands properly then xbox should just give me an adaptive controller with my xbox i should be able to say to them tick box i'm disabled i need an accessibility controller that's not the world we live in we yeah, have to no, pay no, for I that totally luxury understand. totally agree yeah, it's no, horrible I, I that. and it's annoying and it's frustrating. How nice would that feature be though? If when you bought your Xbox Series X from Microsoft.com or whatever, there was an option to say, hey, I don't want a controller, I want an accessibility controller. That'd be lovely. It would, but it's not. The, do you know why that don't work? Because to create the accessibility controller, it costs so much amount of yeah, money, of course, of which course. means the business, the business of video games and the business of what we do, oh, yeah. Look, still it doesn't in... work. You're still going to get upcharged for it. Yeah, I'm in full socialist mode now. We've we've <laughs> taken a right turn and I'm there. Um, no, you but, know. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I, look, it, it's one of those things, like, we keep saying this is such a nuanced conversation, but a fascinating one to have. And, yeah. and, like, can you imagine, you know, we're talking about, okay, me and you are willing to pay an extra five quid for voice acted notes or whatever. Can you imagine if From Software came out and said, okay, Elden Ring's going to have an easy mode, but you've got to pay an extra five quid for it? But Resident Evil does the that. The uproar. Resident Evil what? has it. That you can you can pay for all of the un- unlocks in Resident Evil, so you literally have the infinity rocket launcher that can kill everything with one shot, which is pretty much an infi- is a uh, invincibility mode, and they they charge you when on it goes on sale, but they charge you I think it's ten or twenty pound. There's no uproar about that. Because again, well, we pick and choose. Isn't it? We pick and choose when we want to pick that. Oh, this is pay to win and this is not pay to win. When it's the evil EA, we're quick to they're evil. But when it's Capcom who make Monster Hunter and Resident Evil, and then do this scummy thing of like, if you want all the uploads now, you can get it. Assassin's Creed charges you for leveling up, but we we shit all over that. But we don't shit on this because that's what we do. We pick and choose when we care, and we pick and yeah. choose when we don't care, and we pick and choose when it's right, and we pick when it when it matters to us. When it matters to us, it's a big deal. And when it doesn't matter to us, who gives a fuck? Don't affect me. That's the world we live in. Yeah. Crash, I want to throw it back to you. I feel like me and Fixer have been going back and forth for ages. I, 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 have, <laughs> Fix, I will be honest, throughout like this whole thing, Fix has pretty much like echoed my sentiment on a lot yeah. of this stuff. Um, I will say, if you add an easy mode, you should not make fun of the player for adding an easy mode. And I always go back to Kachino with Metal Gear Solid and he puts the chicken hat if you go on the easy mode. I think that's just a slap in the face of whoever's playing the game. Yeah. I think that's something you shouldn't do. I don't think you should essentially bully your player for not being able to complete it at that difficulty. Just don't make it an option if you like think less of them. Because that's essentially what you're saying. You are a lesser person once you take that easy mode. And I don't think that's the route it should go to. Like Psychonauts adding the invincibility mode is because there are little kids that are going to be playing it and they just want to play the game and experience it. And so that's cool, right? That's fine. It's just if Psychonauts, if you pick that difficulty and then every enemy you find just says jokes about the player and the fact that he's unkillable... That would kind of ruin the experience for the kid, no? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good place to stop, so we will stop there because I could easily keep going. Good conversation. Uh, we could go all day. We could go all day. I love it. I love it. Uh, let's get into Fixer's Sack, shall we? Remember, you can email in or ask questions. My Xbox and me podcast at gmail.com. To be honest with you, I'm a liar because I mainly use the Discord. I haven't checked the Gmail, so I should probably. I was going to say. I should, I should probably do that because, you know. Do you know? Do you, do you know? When, you when's know. the last time you checked the fix? When's the last time I checked it? It's a great yeah. question, Crush. It's a great question. The 29th of June, because there's a question here from Will, and I haven't I haven't looked at it, so that would have been the last time I checked it. So before that, nice. yeah. Well, 
moral of the story, ladies and gents, get in the Discord. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm I'm bad at checking the emails. I'm not. Have we ever checked the hashtag? Because at one point we told people to tweet at us with the hashtag. Do you know where it is? It's just so there's so much going on. There's too many so it's, much. it's it's also unusual for people to email in or no, tweet but I love it. Don't, don't, no, 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 but oh, I love absolutely, it. I love it. absolutely, I love it. Yeah, I want. Well, I need... What we're saying is you should do more of it so it becomes the normal <laughs> for us to check it. Because there was a while where me and Fix asked for Discord questions and we would not check the Discord Never. for questions. Never. Until it Never. became a regular. But we will answer these ones because these are ones that were uh, asked a couple of weeks ago. So Sarah Squid says Is anyone playing Scarlet Nexus? And if so, do you think the Xbox marketing has severely helped the game? I've noticed a number of people admitted they thought the game was an Xbox exclusive when it was released on all platforms, and it's been getting critical praise from a number of outlets. We're seeing a turnaround on the media side where Xbox news is starting to become more favourable, and I think it might have an impact on games that are presented as Xbox games even if they are multi-platform it's still a bit too early uh till we see sales data for the game but from the conversation around the game it seems to be doing really well especially on xbox platforms i feel like scarlet nexus would be a big win for xbox if they wanted to appeal to the japanese market and to fans of our jrpgs in general and then zyga piggybacks off this saying Piggybacking off of Sarah's question, EA have recently announced that they have entered a marketing deal with Microsoft over Battlefield 2042. Battlefield 2042's reveal trailer was the most viewed single piece of content in games media in the past month, considering whatever this question was answered. Outdoing anything from E3 in shocking numbers. They were even a part of the E3, Xbox E3 showcase. The game has got the media excited, and some say it might rival and surpass Call of Duty this year. We know Call of Duty had uh, once partnered with Microsoft for marketing deals during the 360 days, but had since moved all those deals over to PlayStation slides during the PS4 era and seemingly the PS5 era. So do you think Microsoft partnering with EA to promote Battlefield is a smart play, especially when it comes to competing against Call of Duty this year? We know that Battlefield 5 doesn't meet sales expectations from EA's point of view, and we know it sold more on the PS4 system than it did the Xbox system. So do you think this partnership will help both EA uh, meet its sales expectations and Xbox sell more units? The buzz around both Xbox and Battlefield has been higher than it has in the past, so it could be a Big year uh, of changes. P.S. Everyone play Scarlet Nexus. It's amazing and a game of the year contender. Zygon, wow. Sarah, thank you very much for the questions. So to wrap it up and put a little bow on it, um, has again, it kind of comes down to Xbox marketing is really the question. And 100%. how do you feel about Xbox marketing right now in 2021? Uh, July 15th, how how are you feeling, Crash, about the way Xbox are doing business in terms of their marketing? I feel like they come out and they have their names attached to some of these games, but then when it comes to like the prolonged sort of attach rate to them with trailers, I think they did it well with Scarlet Nexus, and almost every single time uh, Scarlet Nexus was shown, uh, Xbox was attached to it for the mm -hmm. most part. There's a few yeah. exceptions. Um, but then if you look at something like Elden Ring, Elden Ring was shown at E3, and it wasn't really attached to Xbox. And we do know that Xbox has marketing rights for that, and that showed up at Games Fest. It didn't show up at the Xbox conference. There might have been a situation where Xbox was like, we don't want it. I don't see that being the situation. I feel like if they had the chance <laughs> to have the gameplay, they would have sure. uh, showed it there. So I feel like they're a lot better now, and them being attached to Battlefield I think is great. Even if Battlefield ends up being a dud, I think that's good just to have their name attached to it. Um, and sort of have the marketing and the Xbox logo show up whenever people are watching Battlefield. People will watch Battlefield. Um, I think that's always the good part of it. It makes Xbox seem like more of a competitor, and they have been as of late. So their name pops up more, and people start associating like, oh, Xbox is relevant now, instead of only seeing PlayStation logos. Uh, but to the, to the main gist of it, I like it. I think Xbox should continue doing it, but I want Xbox to sort of continue showing the Xbox logo with these games and start doing more stuff with them instead of it being more sporadic. Matt? 
I think it's uh, yeah. I look, I agree with everything Crash said. I think these sorts of deals probably come packaged with a lot more than we ever see, right? I wonder how much you know EA Play. Uh, no, sorry, what is EA's vision of Game Pass kind of thing that ties into Game Pass? EA. What am I talking EA play, about? EA Play. No. It is EA Play. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm gonna write first time. Edit out that bit where I thought I was wrong. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder how much of that crosses over, right? And it says, right, okay, you can have that in Game Pass, and then we get Battlefield next year, and da da da. I wonder how deep these deals go. Do you think we've got the next five Battlefield games being, you know, pushed by Xbox and stuff Not like that? Five, we, we, but something like that, right? Exactly, exactly. And so. Um, yeah, we don't know how deep these deals go, right? I think, yeah, they're incredibly valuable to, to Xbox, right? I always remember Destiny 2 was, like, really heavily pushed on on PlayStation. It feels like a lot... Call of Duty, another one, right, which I think Zyga mentioned, uh, was pushed really heavily on PS4. And so I think that does matter because I think, you know, we always say we're in the top 0.1% of gamers that, that care and understand how these things happen, um, but most people just watch the advert on TV and see a PlayStation logo at the end of it and go, okay, I need to get a PlayStation then if I'm going to play Call of Duty or whatever. Um, I think your average humor is becoming more educated on those kind of things, and maybe over time that matters less. Um, but right now, I still think it does matter, especially when you know we're still waiting on a lot of uh, the kind of Xbox published brands to come out with their games. Um, you know, this holiday season is is Battlefield is the big one. I think that everybody's looking at. Um, I know. Sure. We still don't have a release date on Halo. It's holiday. It's going to be holiday season. I know, but until we get a release date, I'm still, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think you're right. I think it will okay. come as holiday season, but, but, um, but yeah. No, I agree. But I, yeah, yeah, I think, I think people are, people are tired of Warzone, I think at this point as well, similar to how people were feeling about, uh, Fortnite not too long ago. Um, and so I think Battlefield has a better chance right now of, of doing something really special this holiday season, uh, than it has in previous years. Yeah, I think just the conversation around Battlefield is the thing that's going to help Xbox. It, yeah. it seems to be a... I don't think Xbox helps Battlefield in any way, shape, or form. I think it still sells to the same amount of players. I think the audience that care about Battlefield care about Battlefield. Again, when you when you think of these marketing deals that we're talking to casuals at that point, not in a bad way, but mm -hmm. that's, that's yeah, who 100%. you're going for. And that is why Xbox dominated the 360 era. There wasn't an advert for games that you didn't see Xbox at. Everything just assumed was Xbox, 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 Xbox. People thought Call of Duty was an Xbox exclusive. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. let that sink in. The, one of the biggest games ever they thought was an exclusive just because of that's how deep these marketing deals have been. And though we've never heard Phil actually change, say it, publicly that he's changed his mind on it because I remember there being a statement saying how he doesn't like them and he doesn't like um, map perps and timed exclusives and stuff like that and that is something Xbox still have stayed away from for the most part where Xbox, where PlayStation doesn't something comes out that is even tan tangentially tied to PlayStation you will see a skin, you will see an avatar, you will see a theme you will see a character you, you always see it Right, we 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 know that that's just facts. That's something something I think Xbox, uh, PlayStation do really well compared to Xbox because mm -hmm. it allows the player base to feel more invested in its characters. And for the most part, I understand why Xbox doesn't like to do it. They want to be more inclusive. They aren't just Xbox; they're PCs as well now, and all of it makes sense. But I think they. They have to keep doubling down, double down on Game Pass, which they obviously are. We already know that. And doubling down on the marketing side of video games is something they they need to do, I think. And um, yeah, it's it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time right now when it comes to all things Xbox. And I'm, I'm glad that they're doing well. I'm happy to see games like Scarlet Nexus perform well on Xbox. I think mm -hmm. that's something that's really important. Like, it's all well and good, all the games in Gay Pass doing well, and that's something that we saw at the launch, I felt like, of the Xbox Series ser uh, consoles, which was like, you saw all these games do really well, and then you saw Yakuza Like a Dragon, not in Game Pass. And I'm not saying it didn't do well, but it didn't have that same buzz, because it yeah. wasn't in Game Pass. And then The Falconeer, another great game, but it wasn't in Game Pass, so it didn't have that same 
that same level of buzz that I feel like if it was in Game Pass, it would have. Um, but I'm glad to see games like Scarlet Nexus definitely do well. I think we're going to see Battlefield do really well across the board. I think it's going to do really well just because there's a lot going for it right now, which we'll talk about later on in mm. the show. Uh, Crash, can I circle back to you very quickly or, or yep. do you want to go on to what we're playing? No, 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 please. Well, uh, the question I was going to ask Crash because Sarah asked it at the very beginning, is anybody playing Scarlet Nexus? And Crash, I've seen that you've been playing it. So I was going to ask you what you think of it. Well, if you if you're here last week, you would know what I think of it. Oh, now. damn it! <laughs> oh, I already i my my opinion from last week hasn't really changed. I think the combat's really fun. I think the story is really interesting. Uh, they do stuff with bonding between characters, so you get special missions with characters. I think that is probably the dullest part of the story, and not be, not because the characters aren't interesting, but because the story is so interesting and it pulls you away from that. Oh, that great. I think it does the story really disservice. Yeah. Um, other than that, like I've I've played more of it this week. We'll talk about that. The combat's still really good. The story's still engaging. I think the story actually gets better towards the end. I don't really have much more to add other than that. I'm gonna have to try it out. Maybe. I, wait, I, you haven't finished it yet, right? No. Once you finish it, let me know, and then I'll I'll make a decision on whether I'm gonna play it or not. All right. If you if you well, say it's game of the year contender, I will. I was gonna say is. Zyger thinks this game of the year contender. We got to put some yeah, time in. But, but Zyger stopped it's working on Xbox and me, so we don't trust him. Um, <laughs> if Grace <laughs> says this game of the year contender, I'll consider it. All right. Okay. I'll consider fair, it. Fair. Um, let's jump into this week's dashboard again. Remember, guys, next week you guys can email in my Xbox and me podcast at gmail.com. I promise I will look at the emails. Just stressing about my hair right now. <laughs> guys, I can't stop thinking about my hair during this podcast. I swear to you. How <laughs> mad is that? Get straight I back mean, down there, mate, after this. I am. No, you went out. As soon as I'm done, I'm walking to the barbers again, which is only like a two minute walk and just been like, I don't know. What, what do I say? Hey, dude, how you doing? Uh, you kind of fucked up my hairline. Kill him with kindness. I, I think you just got to be honest. Don't, don't go too over the top, but just be honest and break it down. Like I paid so what and happens? so for this and it's just messed up. Like, what ha- Bro, you know, do you think you can fix it? The only way he's going to fix it if you push it... Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. He could push it up. It's all right. It's fine. It's fine. This week's dashboard. <laughs> okay. um, first piece of uh, news we'll talk about, which is Xbox are looking to update their controllers uh, similar to the PS5s. Uh, Maybe. Paul Despawn says, following the recent interview from Phil Spencer, do you think Xbox should look at a redesign of the Xbox controller to include haptics, etc., or sticks, or stick with the current design? My opinion on this is Xbox should have a controller that does what PlayStation does. Because yeah. we've seen, number one, it would be good for the industry because more developers would then utilize it because there would be more controllers out there across the board. And people who care about that feature would then go pick up another controller, which is more revenue from Microsoft, obviously. And da 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 da. The business side of it makes perfect sense. But I want this to be an additional thing. I don't want this to become the thing. Mm-hmm. Is my is my stance on it. I love my Xbox controller. I love playing with it. I think it's the best controller ever designed. I think the changes that they made on this year's controller is subtle but needed and they feel yep. good and it feels perfect in my hand. I really like what PlayStation has done with the DualSense, but to me it feels very gimmicky and it takes me out of the experience more than it puts me in the experience and it hurts my hands. So are you, are you talking specifically about the haptic feedback and the triggers? Yes. Yes. As opposed yes. to like the redesigned shell. No, the, 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 the redesign, again, my PlayStation, mate, no one gives a crap about that. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah, literally that's where I'm at with it. I, I love the idea of it being a, Hey guys, we saw our competitors do this thing. We think it's really cool. If you want to buy it, it's... How much is a PlayStation controller? 16. I'm so out of fucking touch. Yeah, I mean, I'm one. Yeah, I think? I think they're 70 as well. They're 70 yeah. bucks, and you can pick one up, and Battlefield, this game, that game, this game, that game, all these games in Game Pass, now have it built in. It won't be fully featured out like the way, say, an Astro Bot is, but it will yeah, have, yeah. like, the pull the bow back, and you can feel it, and the retention, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Be quiet, watch, Jesus. Uh, but yeah, got that. <laughs> uh, no, I, th- I think that's probably what will happen, right? This was in an interview you did with Kind of Funny, I think, on the, on the Gamescast. 
And uh, he said exactly that, right? Like they're looking at the dual sense and like some of the features over there and thinking about implementing it in. I don't think they'll they'll put out a new controller and say, this is the Xbox controller now. No, it'll be like, you know, a, a pro controller, but not or whatever, you know? So um, Perhaps uh, a controller. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, whatever they end up calling it. And it'll be a couple of quid more, like you say. Um, so yeah, I think that's exactly what will happen. I, I don't think it'll be for a, a long while though. I think uh, probably a couple of years. Um, Cause these things take time, you know, and, and they've just done design lab and stuff like that. They want to keep pushing and stuff. Yeah, I think, I, I don't think, think we'll see it for a little while. I think having the options is the big thing, right? It's here's Chuck, your yeah. base controller. Here's your elite controller. Here's your haptic controller. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Like play how you like to play. Here's mouse and yeah. keyboard. Play however it is you want to play on our consoles. So, yeah, yeah uh, I, I generally, I generally agree with what you guys say. I, actually really i like the way it feels on the ps5 i didn't think i would and so i would love for xbox to do this um i just if xbox does it the ability to like change the strength of it i think oh, is definitely something that they should nice. add yeah yeah because like sometimes the triggers like in some games it's absolutely fine but in some games i i really do hate it and it's a feature that i'm like can i turn it off i'm gonna turn it off and i don't want to use it mm -hmm. um so that is something that i think they should look at the customizability with it which i think microsoft will because I feel like whenever, as far as options come, Microsoft's been knocking out of the park with a lot of the stuff they do. Definitely. So I'm sure that'll be something that Microsoft looks at. But I'd be down for it. I agree. I think it would be a brand new tier of controller. And then I think they'll do a new Elite controller that probably has it included in it that you can turn it off completely if you don't want it. Yeah, I think they're just, they're just very smart. I think Xbox have been really smart with their quote-unquote accessories um, now, nah, which an extra controller, I guess, goes under that bracket, right? Design Labs, do we think we see Design Labs move into the Elite space? I think at some point we do. And I think, again, with that then comes the, the haptic controller from Xbox as well, which then a Design Lab version of that. It's anything that's going to keep generating money and people get people love collecting controllers. That's To me, it's a weird hobby. Like, if you're one of the people doing it, more power to you. I respect it. But I've got more controllers in my house than I even need. And I'm just like, well, what do I do with these now? Like, I, I I play with the one I play with, and I'm just one person. Like, what? Yeah. This isn't like the N64 back in the day, where it all four of them plugged in, and, like, I had friends back then. I don't have them now. So now I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? You know? It's the same concept with sneakerheads. They buy stuff that they don't intend to use. They have like special cases to show off all the controllers and stuff like that. I get it. It's not, I'm 100% with you. It's not for me, but I completely understand why people do Too expensive, it. bro. Sneakers oh. also have the potential to go up in value. I don't I think, think Xbox controllers, controllers do, do. I do. Oh, like, if, like super special limited, edition ones, if maybe. You get super, but I, that's what I'm saying. Sure. But, but I not also. Like, yeah. I also think you have to like look how long sneakers like the sneaker game's been going on. It's really long. People sure. collecting uh, Xbox controllers and controllers in general is relatively new yeah. in comparison. So I think for that market to build up, it'll take a long time, and it will have to be like uh, controllers associated with games and products and stuff like that. Which like, we they get. announced. You already yeah, get that. Scarlet the... Nexus has got one. Yeah, Scarlet Nexus. Uh, Space Jam has one. Yeah. Like I imagine in a few years, you can buy those. Oh, you can buy those? The Space Jam okay. ones you can buy, yeah. Got it. Um, but even that case of like being able to buy them, I still think after they're out of production and a few late years later, like that will have a value that's over what they currently are attached to it, I feel like. Yeah. Next piece of news is about a PlayStation exclusive game. Don't worry, it is coming to Xbox. Uh, Deathloop will hit uh, Xbox at some time after September 14th, 2022. Uh, this one was written by Windows Central uh, and written by Jez, who says, uh, Deathloop is the upcoming murder puzzler from Microsoft's Arcane Studios and is somewhat ironically a PS5 console exclusive, despite being under the Xbox umbrella since the acquisition of Bethesda and Xenomax. Deathloop was signed up as we know all this information. The big nuts and bolts of it is the game has been delayed until at least september 14th 2022 which then now means xbox players won't get it until 2023 september 14th afterwards something after that date um you will see Deathloop go into game pass we imagine right it's a first party yeah. game anyway it's again so weird <laughs> so weird so weird but um, i think um yeah i think that potentially does mean that it would like as soon as that hits, I would be surprised if it doesn't just go straight into Game Pass. Yeah, that day. Like as, as soon as that day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. September fifteenth, twenty twenty three. Yeah. 
I, I have a question. 2022. Sorry. Um, I have a question. No, 2023. 2022. Oh, yeah. 2022 no, is when the game comes out. 2023. What? I'm confused. No, no. Deathloop. No, PS5 no. Not for Deathloop. Deathloop oh, comes yeah, out okay. September 14th, no, no, 2022. Right, right. Fix is right. Fix is right. So Xbox will not get a year it later. It until September year later. 15th, 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Goya. <laughs> I was with Vic, then I was with Matt because Matt just sounded like super against And like, it's a Friday. Matt's the 15th is a Friday next year. September yeah, 15th, that's when it comes out. They're putting money on it. That is when it goes in Game Pass. Uh, I have a question. Now, huh? PC Game Pass. Yes. It probably won't come to that day one, no. right? Do you guys think no. what? So no. it's, coming, it's out on Steam as well. It's coming to Steam as well. But yeah, it, no, it can't. It's impossible. The deal they've signed is a PlayStation cross PC exclusive. There's no, that will, you, we already know how these contracts work. We saw it happen yeah. with, oh, what game was it? Resident Evil Village, where it's like, you cannot enter Game Pass for a year because we had the market and all that stuff. Like, no, PlayStation are not dumb. Like, they would have signed this deal to a T. <laughs> um, yeah. So Xbox can't work, worm their way in. So yeah, I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked. But yeah, if you want, if you care about that, uh, you know, you know where to go. Another delay, unfortunately, another PlayStation, uh, no, another Xbox exclusive. Um, that's not exclusive. Sorry, another PlayStation exclusive. Um, Ghostwire Tokyo has also been delayed uh, to twen early 2022. They put out a um, a tweet notice on their uh, Twitter bio, and it reads like this. Sorry, I need to pick it up. We made the decision to delay the launch of Ghostwire to uh, Tokyo to early 2022. We want to get the game in your hands as soon as possible so you can experience an unforgettable version of a haunted Tokyo that has been hard at work built with, that we've been hard at work building. At the same time, we're also focusing on protecting the health of everyone at Tango. Our new release window will give us time to bring the world of Ghostwire to life as we always envisioned it thank you for your patience as we work to bring you an experience unlike anything else we've ever made we can't wait to show you more in the coming months tango game works i have something quickly to say matt was right about the release date it's 2022 not 2023 I wait, thought so. because it comes out september 2021 death loop death loop comes out this so september. it would release on xbox september 2022 mm -hmm. Matt Death was Loop correct. comes out in a few months this September. And then yeah. a year's time, the exclusivity yeah. will lapse and it will come to yeah. Xbox. Matt is correct. <laughs> okay. That was Are a you? long silence. Are you guys still here? I'm here. Um, I'm here. Okay. So why that year on? I, I don't know. I don't know. You, were you were so, so sure, though. Confident. I backed down. <laughs> My hair stressing me out, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. My hair is stressing me. It's all about the hair. Uh, Ghostwire, um, a game that I'm, as we all know, a huge fan of Tango. Um, I mm. love Evil Within. Loved Evil Within one and two. Literally spiritual successors to Resident Evil two specifically. Um, yeah. I'm. I've said I'm. I'm. I'm in a weird space with Ghostwire because I didn't love what was shown, but we also haven't seen too much. We so at all, we? it's hard to judge it on what's been shown. Um, but what I have seen hasn't blown my skirt up, unfortunately. Um, but obviously there's stuff going on in Japan right now uh, in terms of COVID. And there's still, yeah. it's weird how like over here we're coming out of lockdown on the 19th of July and it seems to be getting worse everywhere else. And I'm like, well, what, what's going on, Boris? You idiot. I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, obviously this is good news overall, right? Delays, we again, I'm so bored yeah. of saying it. Delays are a good thing. They are yeah. better for the industry. And, uh, da, 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 you know? It's honestly like gamers are very confusing to me because they talk all this ish about crunch and all this stuff. Like we hate when people do it. And then a delay comes along and they're like, we hate that too. We don't like a delay. You shouldn't delay your games. And it always just confuses me because like a delay should mean that there's less crunch. It doesn't always mean that obviously. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, some, de some developers just POS is right. Um, but I agree. I think uh, Tokyo Wire getting delayed is a uh, Ghostwire Tokyo getting delayed is a good thing for the game. I'm also really out of the two games um, that 
uh, are coming out on PS5, Deathloop, and Ghostwire Tokyo. I'm actually more excited for Ghostwire Tokyo, and I wasn't expecting to be. Because I actually, the gameplay they've shown, I think, looks a lot more interesting than Deathloop. And part of that's because Deathloop's gameplay is very similar to Dishonored. I think it looks like a better Dishonored so far for me. But it is something I've seen before where Ghostwire Tokyo looks original and interesting. I think... Cool. I think for games like Ghostwire Tokyo, right, which are, I think, a bit, it's safe to say, a bit more under the radar, right? Like, not everybody knows of Ghostwire Tokyo, like, certainly in the mainstream and stuff. 2022 is becoming stacked. With everything getting delayed to 2022, a game like Ghostwire Tokyo can quite easily get lost in the shuffle now, I think. And uh kind of sucks, but yeah. I think we'll you're see. underestimating how much stuff's going to get delayed from 2022. Well, that <laughs> is definitely <laughs> a possibility. People really will also delay stuff on purpose. When you see, like, because oh, it happens every time that, like, a bunch of games get stacked to, like, one period where a bunch of games are just like, yeah, we're dipping. And some people will play chicken, like, who's going to dip last? And okay, one of them's sure. like, okay, we're just going to move because we don't want to mess with this. Typically, that doesn't happen too much in the early part of the year, at least. So, um, but, but there are a lot of games now going to the early part of 2020, the 2020. 2022. Oh my god, we need to stop doing years. Can't do no it years. No more years. No more speaking years. Speaking of years, Battlefield 2042 uh, <laughs> oh crossplay <God. laughs> confirmed, but with a slight limitation. This one was written by Jim Joe Scrabbles over on IGN. Uh, EA has confirmed that Battlefield 2042 will feature crossplay, although not all platforms will be able to play with each other. Crossplay was confirmed in a new Battlefield briefing, but EA made it clear that there will be two pools of players rather than one single mix group. PC, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, PlayStation 5, and PC, uh, but in quote, PC and console players can opt out of crossplay, uh, will be playing together. And then you have Xbox One and PS4 will be playing together. The reasoning for the player separation comes down to the differences between the next-gen and last-gen versions of Battlefield 2042. More modern uh, platforms will see 128 player matches, while last-gen will only see 64 players. We also learned that map sizes will be different across last-gen and next-gen versions of the game. Good news, to be honest. Um, obviously, Battlefield having crossplay is a big deal. It is something that we've wanted. It is something that we... We care about in a big, 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 big way. Um, it's a weird one, though, right? It is a weird one where I'm like, oh, that sucks. That sucks, but I understand it. And at the end of the day, we are at that point now. We finally have hit yes. that point of the generation of the... It's now the current gen, oh, obviously. Yeah. And it's like, all right, we are, we are not cutting ties, but we have next-gen versions of games. Yeah. Um, and I think this is the lesser of two evils, really, which is like, we're not cutting you off. We're not stopping cross-play across Xbox One uh, and PS4. But next-gen is next-gen. Current-gen is current-gen. We're not holding back next-gen for current-gen. It's a good thing. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, but, sorry, go on, Crash. I was just going to say, uh, I agree. I'm also really glad that they actually did cross-play because I think whenever we were talking about it, cross-play wasn't announced at the time. And we were kind of like, this probably won't have cross-play because it is EA. So I will say I am pleasantly surprised that the game does have crossplay and that it's not just console that. crossplay. No, you it might have just been. I think you okay. said that. I don't think I ever said that. Okay. I think you if said you that. say that, if you say that, fix. I mean, I've got um, so much wrong today. Don't trust the word I said. <laughs> <laughs> I only got one thing um, wrong, which was dates, and I still, yeah. to me, in my head, I'm like, oh god, my hairline. It's <laughs> it's all the, honestly like your brain power is clearly attached to your hairline. Once it's messed 100%. up, it's all out. <laughs> I'm fuming. Hundred percent. Absolutely fuming. Sorry, Matt. Go um, on. No, I was going to say, you know, it, it, Battlefield is banking on its big online play this year, um, and it's difficult to justify that in a world of Call of Duty Warzones that are free to play and crossplay, um, right? And so you're asking people to spend the money. You need that player base to be there uh, from the off, and you need it to catch the zeitgeist. And so, yeah, they want as many people in there as possible, um, playing the ve best version of the game as possible, right? And so, yeah, I think I think it makes perfect sense. It's a bit of a shame for the for the old gen users, especially because these consoles are still so difficult to get a hold of um, that it kind of sucks for people. But um, but yeah, I think this is the option they have to go with, right? It's the lesser of two evils, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's the, it's the lesser. It's the lesser of two evils. Um, I suppose this is a perfect time to move into my next story about EA, which. Again, it's about FIFA, but I think it's bigger than FIFA because of what it is, right? So, 
I'm probably going to get called a corporate shill here. Probably, but let's, let's try and figure this one out together. <laughs> Fever 22 Next Gen Upgrade comes at a hefty cost, says IGN. Written by Adela uh, Atkins, uh, who says this. Unlike last year's game, FIFA 22's Next Gen Upgrade will be only offered to those... Let me, re let me say that one more time. FIFA's Next Gen Upgrade will be only offered to those who purchase the more expensive Ultimate Edition of the game. Eurogamer spotted the information in the new Jewel, Jewel Entertainment FQA listed on the EA's website when it outlined players' um, eligibility for next-gen upgrade Jewel Entertainment is only available to people who purchase the Ultimate Edition. Um, so what this breaks down is, the Ultimate Edition costs $99, $89.99 for the Ultimate Edition, and the Standard Edition costs $59, uh, $59 pounds, which, hold up a minute, exchange rates, what the hell? Whatever. Yeah, weird. Um, this also means if someone purchases FIFA 22 Standard Edition on PS4 and later upgrades to a PS5, they would need to purchase the new version of the game. Okay, guys. This blew up. This blew up. Big, big talking points here for people. Do you see anything wrong with this? And... I'll go after because I'm the corporate shield. Crash, do you see anything wrong with this? No. Oh. I think we're getting to the point, at least with what we, we see with Battlefield, is that there is differences in these two versions. And I'm going to go off the assumption that there will be some sort of difference in FIFA, whether it warrants the $100 price tag for both versions. I don't know. That's an but, assumption. <laughs> no. I don't think they you will. Have to, you, have, you have to. No, no. I, you, have, you have to assume. Because I, I think even graph, uh, graphic differences, I think that is a difference. That is something else. You are paying for the better version. I think those, that is something that you have to take into account. Um, that being said, uh, who knows with EA, it could, just as Matt was laughing at me, it could be the case that nothing changes with this. But I don't see the problem with, I don't necessarily see the problem with this as long as there is a reason for that change. But we're also not at the same spot we were last year where both versions came out where the versions were coming out like right before the consoles and it's like oh so you want me to buy the game right now but then i'm gonna have to upgrade and do all this but stuff there's, there's it, a lot missing from this conversation as well if you buy the 99 pound edition you get fifa points worth worth up to 35 pound i believe it is um you get the game four days early uh, there's a bunch of other bits and bobs you get. Character, a hero card. There's stuff other than just the upgrade version that you get. Let's make that very, very clear. Matt, I'll go to you first before I. What do you think of this? I think this is insidious as hell and I hate it. Um, I think EA Why? here. Because they know. All right. There is a way that you can do this that makes sense, right? Like you say, you're getting value for money if you buy the <clears throat> £99 version. Sorry, you're getting value for money. But EA know that 99% of FIFA players aren't going to dig into this to figure out which version they need to buy. And like I say, these consoles are still difficult to get. A lot of people are going to be buying the PS4 version or the last-gen version to then upgrade to the next-gen version. Um, and they're not going to understand this. They're not going to look into it. They're not going to go to IGN to figure it out. They're just not. They're going to buy this version they see in Tesco when they walk through the door, and they're going to be happy with it until they get the next-gen console and realize they got to pay for it again. Um, and then maybe they realize, oh, there was a workaround for this, and I just wasn't told about it, or I didn't know. And I, I think mean, that's what they're doing. I To, to argue against that um, in EA's defense, you could still play the PS4 version on a PS5 or the Series, or the Xbox One version on a Series X. It doesn't cut you off the game from being able to play it. Sure. And FIFA, unlike a lot of games, has a relatively short lifespan, right? In the fact that next year there'll be another one. And so, yeah, that is a good point. And, and yeah, you yeah, could definitely argue that. But I think they're kind of banking on people not doing their research and cocking this up. No, I disagree. Come at me. <laughs> I, I don't understand why everyone thinks they deserve everything for free i don't get it why do you think that you should just get if you pay 60 pound for a, a version of a game that is what you are paying for no one is taking anything away from you nope you're just not getting the next gen version of the game why do you think you just deserve the next gen version of the game that's not what i'm saying i no, think that's what I i'm think saying 
Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, sorry, and and I'm not arguing against that. Okay, um, I agree with you. Uh, but there there should then be some sort of upgrade free. No, they shouldn't. Right, that I've... No, they shouldn't. Why? I think Why? Why? So, for what other game do you get an upgrade free for? No, no, no not free. Upgrade fee. fee upgrade fee. Oh, fee. Sorry. I should fee. be able to I pay for the free. upgrade. My bad. My bad. No, 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 no. Sorry. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, my bad. My bad. Misunderstanding. Bad. I should be able to pay for my upgrade. And it should be, you know, whatever the difference is, 20 quid, 30 quid, whatever it needs to be. Oh, great. I should be able to pay for that upgrade. Not, oh, I bought the wrong copy of the game and now I'm locked out and now well, I have to not, pay for the full it's version not the at wrong full price. Copy. Again, you didn't buy the wrong copy. You sure. bought the copy that works on your system at this moment. Sure. Then you bought a new system and was like, oh, but now I want the next gen version. And now you have to pay for that. Sure. I just, I, that's the that's the part I'm not quite, I am not quite getting. And again, People, people always have a go at me for siding with the companies and stuff like that, especially no, EA no, no. as well. Like people, people, people know. I just don't see this as a heinous, horrible thing to happen. But <coughs> I'm dying. My hairline's dead, and oh, my no. I'm dying now. Um, <laughs> I just don't. I see it as a case of, look, are you buying? Are you going to buy a next gen console? Yes, buy the next gen version then. Are I you not just... buying the next gen version, next gen console? Cool, buy the standard version. Simple. I think that's all... re... sorry. Go on, crash. It's also we talk about the casual gamer so often. The casual gamer is not really going to know the difference between the PS4 version and the PS5 version of the, the Xbox. The casual FIFA gamer is buying the Ultimate Edition anyway because they play Ultimate Team. This is the thing mm -hmm. that frustrates sure. me the most: is the people that complain about NBA and FIFA and stuff like that. I've been buying the ultimate version of FIFA's for six years. Nah, I don't even play, play ultimate team. But the thrill of opening bloody packs when I get them, because I paid for them, is what I do. I've, all, I've done it for years upon years upon years now. So for me, I'm just like, this isn't that heinous or hefty a price, especially considering what you are getting. Like what you're sure. actually getting for it is actually worth it. You're getting two versions of the game. Whether you use the PS4 version is down to you, or the Xbox, the Xbox version. Jesus, you still got me doing that. It's because the PS4 know. was that got me doing it. Um, playing the play the Xbox version is down to you. That is down to you. But to me, I do not see it as this big heinous thing. I do not see it as EA being an evil company. I do agree with you in a way that maybe it would have been nice to offer an upgrade uh, fee. But you know what? Business. Yeah, but that's it's where also I come down. That's business. where it feels wrong to me. Is that is that it? Kind of feels like the motive is some people will get this wrong. We'll get a little bit more money. Yeah, some but some people will make a mistake I, and we'll get I more don't, money. I don't. I disagree I, with I, the mistake state thing. If you make a mistake, then that is because you were stupid enough to not inform yourself in making the purchase decision. You're a grown uh, ass adult. Make well the maybe you're not. I, what you're telling me? Six seven year olds have got money. No, but they got parents. Their parents. And they got parents. Their parents aren't gamers. And they got parents. But it doesn't matter. Have they so got if parents. I, if, I hope so. If, <laughs> if I'm supposed to go to the to the store, uh, let me let's say I don't know wait, anything Chris, about wait, a trail. Wait, wait, wait. Do they have a guardian? Okay. Let me not say parents because that's unfair. Do they have a guardian looking after them in their home? Yes, they bloody well do. If you can't be bothered to get off your phone playing Candy Crush and they buy the wrong version of the game, that's their problem. So let's say I okay. have, let's say I'm asked to go and buy something for a drill, a bit for a drill or whatever, you know, and I sure. go to the store. I know nothing about drills and I look at it and I'm like, that is what they told me to get. And I go, I buy it, I pay for it, I go back. And then all of a sudden I bought the completely wrong bit for the wrong drill. Doesn't work at all. Completely incompatible. Is that my fault or is it the people who made the drills fault? It's your fault. You're dumb. You should have bought the right Yeah. One. Just so you're aware. It's also... Even if you buy the last gen version, you can still play it play on the it. current gen console. Yes. Yeah. It's not like they're cutting you out of it completely. It's not like they're like, well, too bad. We're not going to refund you. And now you don't have any game to play. All the progress you made and all that stuff's out the window. Have fun. Buy another copy. Do we, and I'm not up on FIFA, so I don't know. Do we know uh, anything concrete on what the difference is between next gen and this gen will be? Is uh, the... the Player no, no, pools no, no, online they've split or I don't think they've announced anything yet. Yeah, the player pools have split definitely. I, online, I, I don't, I don't, so as far as I'm last aware, last gen yes. with last gen and next gen with yes, next gen. Yes, I believe so. That's the way it is now. Okay. 
I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like you, it. You don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not sitting here and pretending that you have to like it. But what yeah. I'm saying is, we can't keep pretending that this is this heinous thing. Again, would it be nice that EA were were to subsidize the cost in doing it? Yes, but they did that last year for free. For free. Yeah. For free. And I'm not saying for free. I'm not saying it should be for free. free. <laughs> for free. So and I'm not saying the upgrade should be free. I'm just saying you should have the option to upgrade. But why? I agree. No, I'm because... not I'm not saying I don't I don't, let me let me I'm not saying I don't agree. I do agree. But why do you think that? Because it still gets them their money. It still gives the EA the money. It just doesn't shaft the consumer but, quite as much. <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm gonna actually disagree with you at this point because by the time somebody gets a PS5 or a Series X, Series X, not PS5. Let's stop talking about that. It's uh, in the articles, that's why it's confusing <laughs> us. <laughs> the next time a series, next time when somebody gets a Series X or a Series S, yes, um, that game will be on sale. Sports games go on sale quite often. You will be able to get it for the thirty quid or the thirty dollars or whatever it is at that point. And if you were like, I'm going to be getting a next gen console next week, you shouldn't. You should just wait on the game. You shouldn't be buying the last gen version, or buy the last last gen version, knowing that that's what you'll be playing, or buy the deluxe version, because you can't always just blame everything. By on the time the your company. ass is picking up fucking your Series X or or Series S, by the time little Jimmy saved up for it, the game's in bloody Game Pass, and you know what? They still yes, ain't going to know what Game Pass is. Do you know why? Because they're too busy playing Candy Crush. <laughs> it's true. That is a very fair point, Crash and Fixer. And I uh, I yield. I yield. We don't... I, I don't disagree Matt, with you, I by don't, the way. I, I don't want that. you to yield. I know, I know. We're having all these arguments today. At the nah, end of the day, we all arguments. agree with each good, other. Good discussion. <laughs> Conversation. Good discussion. No, I, I 100% agree with I you. It. it should definitely be an upgrade, an upgrade thing. But in the same breath, I understand why it's not there. I this do. is also such a short-lived problem. This time next year, I mean, do we? Re well, actually, no. Again. FIFA is known. FIFA is year. known for going back generations for a long time. Aren't oh, they? so um, they're going to be supporting the, the Xbox One console for they did. I think it was something like three years ago. They stopped supporting PS2. Yeah, I was going to say that. I remember that being a news story. So yeah, okay. Why? But well, then let's have the same conversation again next year. Hundred um, <laughs> percent. Next piece of news is about another sports game, but we're not we're not worried about we're not worried about all the cross gen bundle in this one, um, like even though extra cost. But we're not bringing it up because it's not evil EA. Uh, NBA Two K Twenty Two has announced their <laughs> cover stars in it, which is the main thing we care about. Is Luka Doncic is the cover star um, on the Mal version of the game, and we have our very first W NBA uh, cover star, which is Candice Parker. So big, 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 big ups to Candice. Yeah. Trailblazing, first ever female uh, cover star. I don't know That's if awesome. they must have reversible covers or something like that, uh, maybe. I don't know. That'd um, be cool, yeah. <clears throat> but or whatever way they've done it, I still think it's remarkable. Shout out to her, uh, changing the game. Obviously, you've got the other versions of the game, uh, which is like the legendary edition, which has got Kevin Durant on the front, Um uh, Charlie Palmer or Carl, uh, Carly Palmer I apologise for butchering the name and I believe uh, I don't know who else is is it Kobe? it might be Kobe not sure not sure the art on this is lovely I like it a lot bro cool, I can't like wait for, I can't wait for NBA style. 2K22 I generally cannot wait cannot I'm gonna be honest, wait I'll be 100% honest with you Fix our time on um, <laughs> playing basketball now you wanna come. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of like it could be fun because I, I no. genuinely had a lot of fun with that. The, it, Say your Olympics dude, no, was but your okay, gateway but imagine drug. that. Imagine that, but actually serious. Yeah, which, no, that's what which, I'm saying. Don't get me wrong. Like, I get what you're saying. Of like, not serious, serious, but like serious enough that we're like actually trying to be good at the game. Yeah. Bro, me, you, and Matt yeah. P in the park. I'm tempted. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm Someone's really tempted. Be right back. Okay, no worries. We'll, we'll go on to the next. Should we go on to the next story, Fix? That uh, fix, Crash? <laughs> sure. Oh, God, all falls oh. apart when he's not here. It's a Halo Infinite oh. story. Halo Infinite's multiplayer will feature a ping system for team communication. This comes from, where does it come from? Windows yeah, Central again. Windows. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so, details about Halo Infinite's multiplayer gameplay have been... What have been true? What? I don't know. This doesn't make any sense to me. You're going to have to read it, Crash. Wait, My brain okay. just broke. 
Uh, details about Halo Infinite's multiplayer gameplay have been trickling out from official sources ever since it was revealed during the E3 2021 show, and that trend shows no signs of stopping since 343 Publish Industries lead multiplayer designer Andrew Witz has recently confirmed that Halo Infinite will have a ping system in an employee spotlight blog. Specifically, the system will be called the Mark System and will enable players to mark areas of interest on the maps with their teammates. Uh, my team always gets to work in awesome multiplayer systems like uh, the Mark System, which is a feature where players can mark and spot in the world, lets their teammates know vital information like enemy position or weapon location, said Wits. And that is generally the gist of what this article really goes into. Only takeaway really is that Halo Infinite will have a ping system, which is good to see. Um, I'm very curious how the Halo community will take this because they tend to like not like advancements in multiplayer <laughs> progress like they don't like sprinting necessarily being added yeah. aiming down sights and all this stuff so i'm interested to see how the hardcore community takes this but i think this is good shout out to apex legends for like really uh the adding game. this yeah the game. honestly yeah not even just uh mul not even just first person shooters like you started no, start, you games. started thinking everything yeah yeah, yeah. no 100 there is an interesting thing here of typically Halo, like like we're talking about Apex, Warzone, Fortnite, using all these ping systems, they're much bigger maps than a typical Halo map. Like, I can't imagine running around a typical Halo arena and needing to ping something. It's too fast-paced. There's too much going on. Like, do we think that this points towards a Halo Battle Royale coming and this is why they've added that system? Or is that no. too much of a stretch? I mean, pinging still, like, works. I, pinging's actually, I, I would say, is probably more important if not just as important in halo and that it's a competitive arena shooter and it's like oh where's the guy with the rocket launcher you ping where he is and there's no question of like trying to call out our names or somebody who can't hear you just ping where the enemy is i think it works in this and then also you have to remember the co-op the single the campaign is going to be co-op based sure. and that'll have pinging as well and we know sure. that's supposed to be more of an open world feel as well yeah that makes sense i just feel like if you're really into competitive halo and you're playing with a team you're not going to take the time to ping something, you know? No, of course not. That's the whole point. Yeah. It's not for... It's not for casual, hard, It's not for hardcore. Yeah. It's not for hardcore gamers, people in Discord, people who are even in party chats. I think this goes beyond that. I think... I think the lesser player will play, will use pings. It's similar to, like, if you watch, like, the Nick Merckx or whoever, Tim the Tap Man and stuff like that, when they play as a squad, right? Like, playing COD. They're doing call outs. They're not... They're very rarely yeah. just sitting and ping someone. It's like, yeah, left money there. They know where the money is. They don't yeah. ping the money. They don't stand there and go, oh, let me ping this money. It's like, no, the money's there. Go get it. Boom, 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 boom. This is more for a, a casual a casual gamer, I think. And people who are just, or maybe it's just a very good accessibility option of people who don't want to talk because they're shy or anything of that nature. Bring it all yeah, full for sure. circle. Yeah. There was no one at my door, by the way. Something fell in Haley's wardrobe and it was her shoes. Uh, <laughs> great. <laughs> We're getting a lot of me this week in the in the my Xbox and me, and I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, let me know if you like the me. There's a couple <laughs> of stories that we're not gonna we're not gonna go into too much detail. Resident Evil Versus has been delayed. Oh shit! Again. Uh, and Nickelodeon uh, All Star Brawl has been announced. So I'm big, excited for that. Big big shout outs. I'm sure we can get a let's play going in that or something. That'd be, That'd be a, a good time. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, let's plug 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 and get ourselves out of here because I've got to go to the barbers and have an hour. So, um, <laughs> Crash, where can people find you? Uh, I want you guys all to go to the My Xbox Me YouTube page. Fix mentioned it earlier, but we did put up our first uh, gameplay, uh, the Olympics. Yeah. Um, we have a Sea of Thieves gameplay on the tuck that. Should be going out soon as well. Yep. Um, leave feedback, everything, editing, all that stuff, what you like, what you dislike, what you would prefer to see, everything. We are open to all forms of feedback. 100%. Mm, Matt Pate, what you got to plug? Uh, go on over to the My Xbox and Me TikTok account. Give that a follow. Why not? I'm going to get back on it. I promise you, it will be good again. You can find me everywhere at MC Fixer. Big thing I'm still pushing is my new brand new PC build uh, with Intel overclockers and 
Aurus. I'd love it if you go to my personal channel, youtube.com slash mcfixer. There's a link in there. I'd love it if you click that very link because it helps me out and uh, sends traffic to the website, which then makes me seem like I'm a bigger deal than I actually am anyway. Um, but yeah, like people have, people have said, are we going to be doing some more? Is there going to be more conversation around the PC? People have reached out to ask about the build. Well, there, are, there is, and it's coming very, very soon. Uh, we'll be talking about on my Xbox and me. We'll be talking about it everywhere. And yeah, if you can go subscribe to my main channel, uh, youtube.com slash mcfixer, that'd be amazing. I lost like 30 subs in the last 30 days for some unknown reason. Maybe they did a bop suite or something. I think so. Maybe probably, it could yeah. be something like that, but it did definitely hurt my ego because I went from 4,500 subs to now 4,000. I brought it back up again, but 4,496. Uh, 4, so uh, yeah, if you can go subscribe to my main that. channel. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing another mm -hmm. podcast called mm -hmm. the mc fixer podcast where it's just mm -hmm. once a week me and some me and a friend sit down and just talking obviously people know uh, i had a loss in the family uh, last week and i just didn't have a place to express that because the place mm. i express that is podcasting that is how it's kind of my therapy right and uh, to not be able to do that really was hard so um, a part of me is thinking like, yeah, maybe like a Monday once a week do a uh, MC Fixer podcast, just me talking about other things. It won't just be gaming. There'd be more life stuff. So if you, you actually care about me and not just us talking about Xbox, maybe go hit the subscribe button over there. It would, it would mean a lot. It would help. So thank you all for watching once again. 320, oh, sorry, 302 uh, weeks in the bag. Never missed a week. We appreciate you. And uh, until next time, we will love you, leave you, and see you all later. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. My barber's getting a punch.